everybody, welcome back to Life Under Deborah's Palm, The God Stuff. And you know what I'm going to say, if you like this channel, you get something out of it, please like, subscribe, share, all those things. And this also comes off of a blog and you can check all my website and all my other stuff out in the description box below. Sometimes, well not even sometimes, probably like every time, what ends up happening is the video and the blog are not an exact match. Um, just isn't. So sometimes you get a little different information on the blog than you do the vlog. Just something in case you're interested. So we've been talking about God's love. And in order to understand God's love, you have to understand Jesus because Jesus said, if you have seen me, you've seen the Father. In the last blog and vlog, I was talking about Jesus loving us by teaching and teaching the right way to go. Today, what I'm going to talk about is Jesus and him rightly, dis rightly judging sin. Remember, the Pharisees, Sadducees, teachers of the law, all those guys, they were really harsh in their judgment of the people and they were hypocrites. They expected the people to keep laws and rules and regulations that they themselves were not keeping. And on top of that, they were adding to the laws, making it even more difficult. So now where we're at is Jesus is teaching in a temple, because that's what he does, is he teaches, and he's in the temple, and these guys show up because, honestly, for the three years of his ministry, these guys are going to dog him all over the place. And this is no exception. And I am going to read you the story of, uh, out of, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to read you this story about the woman who was caught in adultery. It's out of John chapter 8, and it's verses 2 through 11. This is the NIV version. And it says, At dawn he appeared again in the temple courts, where all the people had gathered around him. And he sat down to teach them. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought in a woman caught in adultery. They made her stand before the group and said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. In the law of Moses commanded us to... That is a weird reading. The law of Moses commanded us to stone such women. Now what do you say? They were using this question as a trap in order to have a basis for accusing him. But Jesus bent down and started to write on the ground with his finger. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, Let any one of you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. At this, those who heard began to go away, one at a time. The older ones first until only Jesus was left with the woman still standing there. Jesus straightened up and asked her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she said. Then neither do I condemn you, Jesus declared. Go now and leave your life of sin. Now the Pharisees show up to test him. Jesus is Jewish. All the people are Jewish in this one, probably. I mean, the crowd probably could be very mixed, but Jesus is Jewish. The woman's presumably Jewish. She's being held to the law, so that would make her Jewish. And the Pharisees are testing Jesus because if they can catch him breaking the Jewish law, then they've got him. I mean, they're looking for a way to accuse and trap him and get rid of him. So they've come with this woman. Now, personally, every time I've read this story, I think, Where's the guy? I mean, the Pharisee said, women like these get stoned. Okay, that's one half of the equation. Where's the other half? The Pharisees being the hypocrites that they are, they're already wrong in their judgment, okay? They know the law. In Leviticus 20.10, I'm going to read to you, and it states, if a man commits adultery with another man's wife, with the wife of his neighbor, both the adulterer and the adulteress are to be put to death. So they're already wrong. They only showed up on one half of the equation. Where's the guy? And 
never says, but you know, sometimes I, I just, I don't know. Maybe I have that critical type semi-conspiracy theory-ish thing going on. But I always think, was this a total setup for this woman? And did they just let the guy off the hook? Like they just, they just wanted to drag the woman out there and dude, we'll just let you go. Just we're setting this whole thing up. I don't know. The Bible doesn't say. That's just me. I'm like that sometimes. <laughs> so let's look at Jesus' response. Totally unfazed by these coconuts, okay? They're like, she's got to be stoned and whatever. And I, he go, bends down, presumably squats down, starts doodling in the dirt or the sand. And every time I read this, I always thought he was just kind of ignoring them, maybe. It, it never says what he was writing in the sand. But I always thought maybe he was just doodling and he was just kind of ignoring them as they just, you know, he's probably tired of these guys. That was what I thought. But really, when you take a look at this, it says he was writing, which means something specific was being put into that dirt. I don't know what. No one does. It doesn't say. But I've heard some explanations and I thought, no. And then I heard this one and I don't honestly remember who I heard teach it. I think it was a guy named Robert Heidler, although I'm not 100%. But I think this is a great explanation. When I heard this, I was like, you know, I bet that's it. He bends down twice. So the first time he stoops down and he begins to write, the question is, could he have been writing sin? Like from the law, like it's adultery this woman was caught in. Well, there's all sorts of rules and was he writing them? After he gets done with the first writing, he looks up and he says to them, okay, whoever's sinless, you guys throw the first stone. And he begins to write again. The second time was he matching those guys, the Pharisees and the Sadducees or the teachers of the law who have come to accuse this woman, was he actually writing their names and connecting them to those sins that he had written in the first half? Because it says they left one by one, beginning with the older people first. Presumably, you know, as you age, you probably do more things wrong. Your list gets longer. They were the first to leave. So was Jesus calling them out? I think that's probably a pretty decent explanation. Like I said, it's not written, it's not scriptural. We don't really know for sure, but it wouldn't be surprising if that's exactly what he was doing because he calls them out as we go along. You'll see every time they have something to say to him, he has a rebuttal that they cannot, they can't, they have no answer for him. So no doubt they saw themselves in whatever he wrote on the ground, regardless of what it was, they saw themselves in it and knew better. So their hypocrisy was on full display, whatever that was. Now let's look at the poor woman. She's been dragged in front of a crowd of people, caught in adultery, humiliating. That may have been the least of her worries because she also knew the penalty was to be stoned to death. She was facing death. But instead what she got was a front row seat to the humiliation of her accusers. And she got a release from Jesus. He told her to go, but to sin no more. His judgment was not to hold her to the letter of the law as had been done to the people. He was coming to give people a choice. I'm willing to bet the woman probably didn't do that anymore. Um, that, would, that would just be my guess. But... All the laws that the people were held to, Jesus is not negating them, okay? He didn't say, oh no, go ignore it, do anything you want, because I love you and God loves you. That's not at all what he said. He let her go, said, I'm not condemning you, but stop doing what you're doing. He said, sin no more. He did not say it was not sin and it was not wrong. He said, don't do that anymore, okay? Please note that. So he is judging her out of love and out of grace and out of mercy, not out of 
the hypocrisy and the um, the letter of the law that the Pharisees and the Sadducees were holding the people to. Jesus loved the people. He wanted them to be free and stop doing what they were doing and go a more excellent way and live a better life and learn the love of God. That's what he came to teach and bring to the people was love, correct teaching, healings and miracles and signs and wonders and all the things that he did. So until the next time we meet under the palm, not that I have a palm up here, but until the next time, have a great day and be blessed.